all right guys well as you guys saw in the little video shorts this is my project for the day this guy got some cracks in this area here and on the other side it's actually worse <laughs> and you like the way they hold it up the forks and the tires yeah it's nice actually i'm not gonna get under there like that mechanics coming back out <clears throat> uh, this is the, the bad side right in here that baby cracked it looks like somebody had repaired it. it's still a little bit shiny so somebody tried fixing that beforehand but this is more of a tube structure so the cracks that are on the outside are also on the inside and this is right behind the steering or sorry the pivot for the axle mount so this is gonna be a tricky one I haven't done one of these before but like I say the mechanics coming out here and he's gonna remove the radiator and all the, the front half of this stuff hopefully get some jack stands put them under there get rid of this weight here because all the weight is, is helping to spread this open which stinks and then yeah, I don't know if you can see way back there you can see the other side of the cracks so stick around this is gonna be a fun one I've never done one of these before so this is gonna be interesting all right let's get to it okay so I got back from lunch and the mechanic uh, removed all the front end stuff for me which is good it gives me access to this area here uh, like I mentioned before oh man a long time ago I replaced this guy right here these this pin uh, the, the eye for that pin split open towards the bottom and this front axle pivot was really loose but anyway so now you know, it's developed that crack there and it went around <laughs> that plate same thing here and this side was where I repaired it some time ago and it started to tear this corner because it came from that side I'm thinking what happened was this side here twisted up like that and it put some real big torsional forces on this side so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to gouge all this area here and try and create a gap so that we can squeeze it back together I don't really know how we're going to squeeze it right now because there's no real way of putting any downforce and the customer came and left me jack stands so I'm put it on jack stands well that's their jack stands so I'm gonna have to go get some probably tomorrow bring some from the house so uh, a lot of work ahead of me okay I guess, I guess I better quit talking about it all right let's get something done okay so I got it semi cleaned up and what I've talked about before is that being as how this material has stretched it's never gonna close up closed again so what I try and do this is kind of risky right but I try and do is I try to go ahead and torch a gap in there something for it to have something to close back up and then I'll just fill it in I'll close it up as much as I can and if I get it closed to where it touches where it's supposed to be and then I'll see where the, the opening the you know the tight and the loose spots are then I'll gouge in between there as carefully as I can so that I can get a hundred percent penetration without cutting too much if that makes any sense so I think that's what I'm gonna do just get the torch in here and just cut a little slit just enough for this to touch together and I'm gonna try and do that all the way around this thing on both sides Whoa.
other side. Okay, I think I cut enough room just to begin with. That is to get me started. But, you know, I really don't have any way of pulling it together. I was hoping to be able to grab onto here and run a chain or something down the, the back side of there. But this fancy jack is in the way. And I don't want to weld anything on here to create a clamping situation because then I just create heat ri um, stress risers where the welds were. So. Let me chew on that a little bit and see which direction to go. I'm going to look it over a little bit more, see if I can cut some more uh, relief out of some areas. So if you look at here, like I was mentioning, that won't close back together correctly if, if I didn't cut a gap. That's why I cut the gap on this side. So I don't know. Uh, let me try a couple things or let me think of a couple of things and then get back with you in a second. Sorry, you guys are on the pivoting axle. That right, looks all right. Let me get a straight edge. Okay, it needs a little bit more.
All right. Well, you see, that wasn't so bad. Now, there are some areas that got more gaps than others, but that's okay, right? More for the uh, weld to penetrate. But actually, what I'm gonna do now is gouge those areas with the actual arc gouger. And just be mindful of the spots that are a little wide. I mean, I'm out of breath. Uh, <laughs> swing that hammer. Anyway, so I'm gonna gouge those areas and hopefully that'll relax the area a little bit more. I am pretty close to flat. Let's see. Right in here. There's a little spot to the left of the crack that it looks like it's still a little offset. But for the most part, that is a straight line all the way across. A lot better than it was. Uh, this could be just that it shifted like that. But that's okay. Uh, things are looking really nice. Now, I normally talk about not liking fish plates or uh, plates that go on top of other welds. Now, I'm not going to do that here, but I may put one lengthwise underneath that way because then that'll become a tension pull instead of a uh, one that's flexing like a boom or an ex on an excavator. You know, that's just too much uh, force that it's stopping uh, in the sense that it's not allowing the boom to flex. Here, most of the problem would be these guys want to pull apart this way. So maybe I'll put a piece of flat bar of some sort under there just to kind of help strengthen it up. So this side's looking good. Let me go look at the other side. Uh, if the other side is good, I'll probably just start gouging and I'll let you guys watch that. All right, this guy didn't move at all. It's flat all the way across the top there. It did attempt to stretch this bottom part. So, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and gouge from here and all the way around underneath. On the inside, it looks really good too. I was able to cut enough clearance. Is it gonna be fun to weld? No, it's gonna stink. It's gonna be hard to get to. I may actually use my flux core or some 332 rods. I'm not exactly quite sure yet. Uh, most likely flux core because I can get most of it from the top if I'm cautious. Stick welding from this top side would be challenging. So, I don't know, we'll see. But then uh, this side looks good. Just bevel all that out and start welding it up. So we're looking pretty good. Let me start gouging. All right, so my arc gouging here is gonna be very purposeful in the sense that I'm probably gonna arc a little bit like on off, like you see me do it on uh, some of my MIG welds at the shop. Just a little arc and arc and arc, just slowly take away what I need because this material is very thin. It only proof, looks to be maybe 5 16 thick. So I don't want to accidentally make a hole that I don't need to make. So I'll have to be very careful. Just on, off, on, 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 on. Just keep doing it all the way down. Unless I feel comfortable that it's, it's gouging nice and smooth and uh, lightly enough or delicately enough. But other than that, I'm going to do it just in pulses, pulses uh, to reduce the chance of busting through. I still might. So who knows? There we go. see some of that um, you can see some of the gaps there that I was creating so that may be a little bit of an issue you know with keyholing it but that's okay um, just for reference 
this is a quarter inch carbon rod so that's that's a fairly small uh, bevel very very small bevel so actually I, I might do flux core that way I can at least for the root maybe I don't know what we'll to see that way I can pulse on and off without having to bust through it and I'll probably bust through it anyway but uh, this side's looking good here I was able to see a little bit of the way down there but eh, not so much and so now it's this side I'm gonna gouge this side and uh, see if I can find the other cracks there's some where am I at my hands in the way I'm gonna gouge this side here and then see if I can find some more cracks it looks like there's one developing right there so let me uh, get that done as well About as good as I can get it and this stuff here I want to see if we can lower the machine because I'm tipping so in just to get over this spot here but I think that'll be good enough and what I would do is I'm gonna use my wire machine for this uh, I'm gonna run it a little bit hot on the voltage side and back it off on the wire that way it has a nice arc instant arc uh, but I will have to be careful that I don't blow through. It's kind of a funny balance. So I think that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. I ended up, I had a small pneumatic grinder, those long neck three inch pneumatic grinders. I ended up ruining it because I had too much water in my in my system and the bearings rusted. So even with oiling it, so that stinks. So I'm not gonna grind it. That's about as good as it's gonna get. The needle skater does a really good job of of getting you know the miscellaneous carbon uh, remnants off of there and so even with the flux core the flux core will boil it out anyway so let me get set up for that and we can get started probably on this side first Extended neck on that gun, but you guys may be 
hinder too. Let me see where I put you guys. That's a little tough. There you go. Uh, I would say you couldn't ask for better than that for uh, the position it's in. I mean, that's the best I could do, right? So that should definitely do it. I didn't, oh, sorry, it's out. I didn't do the, this bottom side there i think i'm gonna try and grab that from the from the lower end and just weld on the upside sorry weld vertically up to that point so this side's done now it's this side i'm gonna see if my my camera will catch the uh if i have my welding lens if it'll catch this let me show you guys what i'm doing for 
any uh, beauty contest. So now that that's together, I can let go of this. I was gonna try and gouge here, but I don't want to gouge over my, my chain come along. So uh, I welded it all up so I can do the outside last. So let me uh, do that. Let me loosen all that up. Well, it looks like I chewed this apart. Man, look at that, it's horrible. Look at all those gaps. You know what that tells me? 100%. 100% weld. Well. Oh man, that's terrible. But anyway, uh, fortunately, I will be able to use the flux cord and you'll see what I'm talking about. It just allow me to stitch right over that like, like nothing. So that'll be nice. Uh, one of the things I don't like is that this is a, at a different height. I don't know if I should hammer this in or make the effort to pull that out. Yeah, it's a hard call. But uh, we shall see. Oh, actually, I could hammer right there. That'll probably make it go in. Okay, so now it's time to weld this thing up. The underside? Underside looks okay. Actually, no, I need to fix that. Let me fix that real quick. And then we'll start welding. So, for the most part, it looks all right. Um, now I'm gonna go over it with 332 in there. I like three. Uh, I like 718s or Excaliburs because they have a little bit more elongation properties. You know, they'll bend before it breaks. Some of these wires, like NR211, NR212, sometimes they're a little too brittle and they'll just snap. Kind of like a 6010 will snap. And so this wire. It's pretty close to the same properties as the 7018 does. But, you know, just for kicks, I thought I'd do some uh, uh, stick welding. I've been out of practice for a little while, so may as well try it. Doesn't hurt. If anything, I can just grind it smooth. <laughs> All right, so here we go.
practice than I thought. <laughs> but it'll work. Overhead came out alright. Where is it? There it is. But um, that'll do it for this side. Now I need to get on the outside of the other side. Let's see. Yeah, this guy here. And then gotta weld uh, the difficult spot way back in there. That's not gonna be fun. On second thought, I'm gonna call it quits for the day. Uh, got some possible rain coming in, I don't know. So let that sit. It's already five o'clock anyway. So you know to wait another another little while. It's not gonna hurt anybody. It ain't gonna hurt my feelings. So I'll get the jacks, I'll put them underneath the axle. I have more room to climb under there. That'll be a little bit safer for me. So I'll just wrap this baby up and be back on moon day. All right. So now that I got that on jacks, um, I'm not completely out of the woods yet. I've got to still take care of all this underneath stuff. Which I'm glad that the jacks are here now. So I don't want to hit those hydraulic jacks. But here's the problem. I was able to get some of this on the way down. Oh, I'm sorry, from the top side. But now I've got to get under here and gouge all that. Same thing over here. So it's easy to stick the camera up in there and look at it, but not so much to uh, see it and gouge it. So that'll be fun. Uh, so actually I'm gonna try and see if I can gouge that section up there from the top side and uh, gouge it down. I'll gouge this side from that direction so I don't shoot it towards the truck. And uh, I may have to move these hoses, I'm not sure. Let's see, yeah, I can do that over there. Okay, so almost there, but not yet. All right.
All right, so I got about as good as I can get. Right in there. Same thing over there. Pretty tight. Uh, I may not be able to, what do I mean? I can, uh, it's just gonna be tough, right? It is what it is. Okay, so next is wire welding that baby. I'm so glad I'm wire welding it because this, this is just a tight spot. So uh, let's get to working. Okay, so I got that side done. I ended up welding over an old weld. Eh, should have left it alone. Um, but anyway, it looks all right. And it's, uh, at, least it, at least it's decently consistent. Uh, I ended up grinding the weld under here off because I am going to put that plate that I talked about just to help strengthen it because I didn't like the way that was welding uh, when I was doing the overhead. So now I'm going to do the other side over there and get that finished up. Now I'll start cutting those plates and then just add them on. All right, I gotta say that was pretty tough. That was very tough actually. Oh. You can't really see that one. Probably can't see this one either. Um, anyway, so as I mentioned, I'm gonna grind off the bottom of the welds. I'm gonna grind off this weld here. grind that one down flush as well just so I can put a piece of plate across here like I was talking oh sorry under here in that area just to help it uh, more so on this side that I didn't like I don't like the way that was welding it seemed like as I was bridging the gap like it was too thin I wasn't able to penetrate the, the parent metal as good as I thought so little plate won't hurt and you know again it's just a tensile pull so let me grind that up cut some plates and get done with it baby Alright guys, well it looks like I got done. Got those uh, little, I don't know, fish plates, gusset plates, I don't know what you call them. Got them on there. Uh, ran the welds past about an inch or so. Uh, 
to keep the stresses from building up along that edge there. Well, that's about as good as I can get it. Let me turn the light on for you guys. tougher job than I thought but you know I came out all right now uh, this uh, wasn't too too bad I've had worse <laughs> but uh, anyway like I said I'll do it for me sorry to huff and puff as I'm climbing out of these things these rocks are sharp but uh, anyway so uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you guys learned something and we'll catch you guys on the next one